Welcome, everyone. My name is Maureen Ann Toons, president of the Vancouver ACM SIGGRAPH and festival director for Spark Animation. Welcome to Spark Animation 2022 and this special session in our Meet the Filmmaker series. Very, very thrilled and very pleased and humbled to be here with uh, director Ken Mimura, the director of Wings to the Sun, which was uh, awarded the director's prize at this year's Spark Animation. Uh, Ken, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, I'm glad. I wanted to start by asking you a little bit about your early career, because it seems like you've always been into art, but did you have any idea what you wanted to do? It depends around where, when, where I start to realize what I should do. You know, in general speaking, like every case, my joy was, uh, you know, making things out of natural things, twigs and bamboo. In Japan, I was kids, kid, very young kids in Japan through uh, other foods. So, you know, I was pretty creative to pick up wood or bamboo and think, making things. And I enjoyed it very much. And now, uh, what was that question? When the, yeah, well, what, what, it seems like art was always a part of your life. So when, what did you think you wanted to do with that? Well, you see, that's a long story to answer in a short question like that. So let me see. Uh, I think my mother realized I was pretty good at with hand and the doodling stuff like that. And as soon as I entered elementary school in Japan, the US system, because Japan was once occupied by US after the war, never been conquered or colonized, but occupied. So school system went under General MacArthur uh six three three another was six element years element, elementary school middle school for three years three years for high school just like uh, us i guess canada i don't know well and uh, so by the time before entering uh middle school which usually uh, how old would be that anyway uh 12 years or something i was already already aware of I was much better than other students to create things and draw, drawing things. And my teacher in grade three, I remember, is Miss Ishara. She made me draw history of Japan, you know, Stone Age and Pottery Age, long scroll. I draw with watercolor or something, and she put up around the top part of the classroom. That kind of thing. I don't know why she chose. Maybe she thought I can draw history of Japan. So I had all the tendencies as she recognized. And also she made me, I remember she made me produce a, what you call cardboard illustrated uh, theater, flipping cardboard, crayon drawing. And uh, that's, a, that's a story she brought up. Puss and the boots or something, like cats and boots. <laughs> and I do like this, and the two classmates, 53 or um, something, uh, kids, there's a story. Now, I was showing off some kind of audio visual thing already. So I was unfortunately pretty distant. <laughs> so, you know, you, you're already predestined to go into uh, into yeah. making films, but you, you started working in design before into moving animation. Was that trans the, the transfer, the move between design and animation a conscious one, or did you just kind of stumble into that sort of new career? Well, that is a very profound, complicated question to answer because they don't happen by accident, on the accident. Uh, soon after I realized I realized I can do well better than anybody around in a school, in the middle school. And even my class teacher of, for fine arts, there was such a thing, class and fine arts, special teacher, other than class uh, teacher herself, himself. And he put my doodle. It's a funny episode. Uh, I forgot to bring my watercolor package to classroom of art class. So I asked the neighboring little kid, very stingy, and I thought I have to borrow the color. So he wouldn't give me a red and a green. So I said, yellow, can I borrow it? He said, okay. 
I, you know, some color, yellow or color. So I draw on some kind of a zoo cage and a big giraffe sticking head out. And I made a squash circle intentionally. And uh, my teacher did not say anything. Strange drawing I did. He sent to Osaka City Art Gallery, big one. And uh, I got an award. You know, that, that wasn't my intention. So I thought, hey, that's interesting. Something like that, you know, start to happen. Okay, so what's your question was? <laughs> the, the move between, um, you know, going from design into oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a very important question. Uh, design, I, you know, I, I like to tell you, if you are North American, you may be a little too young, but in the 60s, there was a designer called Saul Bass. Saul Bass. He designed around the world 80 days, Bonjour Triste, and West Side Story, 100 of oh, cycles, graphic mm. design at the beginning, you know? And uh, the, uh, and the vertigo of the uh, uh, Alfred Hitchcock, those great Spartacus too. When I saw his first design in the middle school, film called Man with the golden eye, arm and the cut cut graphics, arm going like this, graphic data comes like this. That was Solbus work. So I thought that was maybe grade seven, eight. Wow, you know, the, until that time I was fascinated with the World Disney feature, like a sleeping beauty, beautiful Ivan Art design. I met him later years. Gorgeous design, style of design of trees and castles. I thought I like to work like that, but I had I had no idea how to get anywhere in California. Uh, and then Soul Bus design inspired me. I want to do that, not cartoon animation. So I looked around. There was a school in Tokyo, graphic design school called Musashino School for Fine Arts. Soon after I became a university, but it's a fine art school. And they were associated with the Pratt Institute in New York, very good place. And uh, it's a level is high. And of course, my father, when I told him I like to go out to school, what? That's a, you're gonna be bigger. That's what it was after the war. Barely survived, you know, bread and butter, bread and soy sauce or something. So uh uh he said, no way, but he, he thought about it. If there's money for it, maybe okay. He was a merchant, bookstore owner of a chartered bookstore, big one. So he was thinking money all the time. So uh, he went to Tokyo and visited this art college. That time, luckily there was a student graduation exhibition. All designed graphic design were printed even. Just like Pratt Institute, excellent professional work, not to do it on some art colleges here. And he said, okay, you can go. So I, <laughs> I went, yeah, you see? And then design, uh, I was in my back, my mind design, graphic design, I wanted to do. So I went out, other art school in Tokyo, in evening school, I was going to art schools a day. Busy, but it was great. So graphic design, I wanted to know to make bread, okay? And then during that time, how to make 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 story very condensed. How to how to survive is it's a way to go direction of applied art, not not art for art. I learned oil painting in the art college, but that's not basic thing like a the song, you know, like a Greek sculptures, just a scrap, you know that, right? Drawing Apollos and stuff like that, day and night, uh, with charcoal and bread. <laughs> if you know what I mean, like Echo de Bazaar, you know, charcoal and bread, charcoal and bread, most of the time eat. And, and uh, uh, that helped me all the time. You may see my, Drawing back, that's I did in Firenze, the Academy de uh, Firenze. 
So I drone that in each one of like five minutes, 10 minutes, so quick. I shaded after I came back. I did a seven or eight drawing one hour time, charcoal painting, a pencil drawing. I came back, I shaded. Anyway, uh, so I did academic basic training, just like you have to know basic scale after scale, day and in out, piano and guitar, just like that. I knew that I have to do that. I cannot take it. So I'm glad I did that traditional way. Yeah, that's kind of, I have to mention that. Uh, very important for young people, really train the basic of any future plan. Traditional academic training, music, drawing out, anything. Otherwise, no way he can be unique, even science basic, study basic, basic, basic. Then I'll trust this kid will get somewhere. If teacher, school teacher, like uh, some school around here, Ontario Art College or something, I, I went, I, I went to see the teacher saying, "Don't bother drawing that old white Greek sculpture, just just thing." And some teacher I had crushed that just sculpture on the floor in front of a student. Maybe he never could learn that, so he had to deny that <laughs> to just by his failure. So. That's okay, but I wouldn't deny that's important academic training. Anything like that, gymnastic, uh, martial art, years, years of basic training, not high kick, fancy tricks, simple technique you have to learn. Yeah, anyway, you are good. Yeah, you need to <laughs> learn the basics before you break the rules. Absolutely. And then your own creative originality comes after that. You know, yeah, yeah so for sure. I'll emphasize that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You worked in a lot of um sort of like practical design fields before moving into animation. But yeah. when you did finally go into animation, I think it's funny because you know, you talk a little bit how you, you weren't really interested in the cartoony, it was the salt basses that appealed to you, but you went to work at Hanna Barrera and then at Disney. <laughs> um, what was that experience like for you and how were those two different? Yeah, great. Before that one line, yeah. this kind of joke, that's very important joke, true joke. I started do animation myself, piece of paper and peg, peg and all that, light box in my apartment room. And uh, I wasn't employed yet in any animation production in Toronto because only one production was there in Toronto. Just was 60, 67 or eight, because I immigrated from Italy to Toronto, Tro Milano to Toronto. Uh, in a sense, my passport has a stamp to of Canadian embassy stamp. And it, uh, technically speaking, I was uh, an Italian immigrant from Italy. And uh, arriving in Toronto with dollar 75 in my pocket, I don't know how I saw but I was young, so I could. And then that time I knew I have to really go fast. So what was I talking? What was I speaking about to the question? I forgot to say. You were going to tell us a joke, but a very important joke. Yes, yes. And I finally got a, a job in animation. Uh, long story, but make very short, very wonderful story. But I got a job uh, in Toronto. This new company animation started, animation series, TV animation series started. First time in Canada. And I mentioned a couple of times in the recent past to Canadian people, young people, young means 40, 50 people. And uh, 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 I mentioned this production name, Rocket Robin Hood. And uh, you know, maybe you are too young or too old, I don't know. Low people know that. And uh, they write them. I was doing storyboard. I was hired as an assistant in between uh, but uh, president of uh, owner of this company, very clever, hired me, that's lowest salary. Oh, did you draw that? You know, I shown him uh, some kind of set design in Italy, at the academy I went. And, uh, oh, you wanna do storyboard? What, what is storyboard? Oh yeah, that's like a comic book. I, I can do that. So I started to do that. And it's same salary, very clever man. I remember him. But you know, this guy, I, let me go. The, later year, three or four, five years later, came to me three years ago. Can you do 
this new TV series, Bill Cosby's uh, cartoon series. Can you do a direction or something? Mr. Soso, I don't mention name. You hired me such a way and paid me lowest salary. Now you asking me, I don't want to work for you. Hey, I told him that's a nice sweet revenge, sweet smell of revenge. Anyways, that was a sad ride. So go ahead, continue. I get lost because I went all over the world many times, yeah. right and left. So I get lost in my back truck. No problem. Well, how did you end up at Hanna Barbera and then eventually at Disney? Oh, how did you experience what I wanted to tell you. Yeah. Uh, to my colleagues, animation colleagues, Spaniards, English, or oh, everybody came from all over, French guy, uh, rag tag team doing animation. And then I said to my friend there, I'll never work a company called Hanna Barbera. Please stone the horrible stuff. That's not art. I said that. But you know, my young friends, never say never because you end up going that way, which I did. <laughs> and what, what was it like when you finally did get there? Was it as bad as you thought it would be? Make a thousand miles into you know one yard. Now, I was in Hanna Barbera. Mr. Hanna, William Hanna, when I first time I met, he didn't know who I was. He thought I was from Toronto. And I shown my uh, demo tape, 10, 10 minutes demo tape I created in Toronto as TV commercial, Sesame Street, or a bunch of other uh, Because I never did the same style, same commercial, same style. Sesame Street, such a second, wonderful little episode. And every time I made totally different weird techniques for kids, worked out. And so I told my colleague, I'll never work with Hanna Barbera and end up. So you asking Walt Disney? Yeah, I was in, uh, in total seven years, Los Angeles, Hollywood. And during that time, I worked many places. After Hanna Barbera, uh, I moved Walt Disney. Just to say I made it. Yeah, yeah. Holy, you know, holy mountain. I they improved me. I was already 50 years old. Can you believe that? And somehow about 45 years old guy, 50 years ago, uh, our old old stuff animation guy, designer. I never seen anybody came so late of his life in, as a new worker. Because company pick up Sheridan and Courage, young, you know, flower cheap, winning, abused. So all the guy experience very difficult to tame. So probably they, they don't want, but I was something good about it. So they hired me as a scene planner and background design. No color, but designing scene. production called Pocahontas. If you know the name Pocahontas, Pocahontas or something. And uh, native Indian, little girl's story. And it was disgusting because some source of Smith, 35 years old British guy, more or less this uh, 15, 12 years old guy. Some stories are horrible, but maybe it's a fantastic romantic story. At least they got away from Sleeping Beauty, white castle and white horse and shining up, that kind of story, bush. So that, by the way, I think that kind of story, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, made many North American girls and they ended up in a shrinks, psychiatrist. I thought future wasn't like this guy, aren't like that, end up a psychiatrist, you know? Why are you one of them? No. So uh, uh, it's, I hated that Walt Disney philosophy. And Pocahontas is a horrible idea, new market for Native American, Native Canadian or something. Maybe they will make Native uh, Japanese American story into a cartoon. Come on, you know, that's horrible. Uh, uh, so anyways, I was hired and Pocahontas is interesting because the production was so good. As far as technique was, every one of them top of rank of skills and, uh, you know, ability. So I wanted the first of all, compete with best of the best in North America world, from all over the world, Greece, anywhere, Italy, 
able to come to. That's a Japanese guy ended up or finally made it. So everybody was excellent, but you know, some I wanted to really meet someone. Wow, I cannot do that like him. I wanted to meet someone to challenge. And I met one guy. Yeah, was great. You need that kind of someone who can fight with you. You need equal, you know, level. That's a fun. So I did it. That's all. How did you eventually end up back in Vancouver or in Vancouver, not back? Yeah, come back. How did you? Yeah, how did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. After seven years, uh, during that time, I married uh, Lorraine, my present wife, and we've been thirty, almost forty years. I forgot, and. uh, I uh, drove back up to Vancouver. She agreed to move to Vancouver because she was once here, worked for uh, Beatles uh, film, Yellow Submarine or something, for a short period of time. She knew what the environment was, social environment, you know, environment, natural environment. So she agreed to come up there, maybe she, yeah. And we drove up camper truck and settled here, made a short, very short story of a thousand miles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I was reading that, you know, Wings to the Sun was originally conceived 45 years ago. Yeah. Was this, the, was it all just always sitting with you? Did you work over, on it at all over the years? What, why now? Why did you decide to finally finish this now? Yeah, thanks for asking because uh, that is very important question you brought up because I didn't know anything about technical part of animation. Only I knew there were 24 frames in a second. And draw every second of frame or something makes things move. I knew that, of course. But that was enough. So I started to do, uh, when I had time, I didn't have a job of animation right after immigrating to Toronto from Italy. Uh, I started to draw, uh, line drawing. Friend of my American was there, happened to be friended. He gave me animation peg, floating peg, animation paper was paper was Oxbury punch hole, slip holes, and I start animate. That's at the beginning, two scenes. Woman come out from bo- box. She comes comes out box and she recognizes she's a female. She sees the world and you know, surprise and she recognizes and she flies off. And another one's egg, egg man come out and he is also struggle out and flies to the space. That's the only creative work I did. I had no idea about this, uh, making the flat wing to the sun in the future. So I left there and but because, because creating that short animation, couple minutes, gave me job at a new production in Toronto, the main I mentioned. So that was great. Then I left it in the draw. Until many years later, uh, I thought I have to do something very original, like uh, creative animation, like what, uh, not, not, uh, sorry, excuse me, uh, creative work like Norman McLaren, he who I acquainted very well, and uh, he was just uh, got me under his wing kind of situation. I couldn't get a job. Even Mr. McLaren tried to get me into NFB, but my kind of direction I had, he wanted uh, NFB Grant Munro. He didn't see that's the direction they can go for, cost too much money. So I ended up coming back to Toronto. And so, you know, my story is so long to edit, digest into a short sentences. I'm sorry. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so the you know you started working on it forty five years ago and it got you that job. When did you s- more recently? When did you finally sit down and say, okay, I'm going to finish this project? Oh, great question. That's what you're asking. So I thought I've been doing Sesame Street TV commercials, all the pro- production works. I just like to go back to original idea. Very original idea, originally, original, original idea before I left Japan was I wanted to compose color in time sequence. I called color music, or later I called Vizica. Later, yeah, I went to Italy, Torino to write thesis. Nine months I wrote thesis. 
and uh, about composing color like a music, like different rule, different principle. That's our thinking that, and I failed because cost so much money and all that, all wrong soul. So I came to the conclusion, I have to do something really artistic like Mr. McLaren did. Inspire artistically inclined young people to track their way. So a purely artistic inspirational story I wanted. And one day, 1976, long time ago, 1976, I saw new issue of National Geographic, it's issue for Nazca line. Nazca is a, a plateau in Peru, highland plateau. There are many, many big drawing, white line drawing on the ground. Earth drawing, geographs they call. Many, many archaeologists now going crazy. Some lady from Germany died there to the death researching, you know, famous person, Maria Sosa. So I thought, hey, this is fantastic. Who did it? Nobody could understand. Enigma of a millennium. So I looked at, wait a minute, that's, I know the answer. Didn't take more than five minutes. I thought this is that way it's done. That's way built. Why? It's a rain dance, rain ceremony. Drought is a vital issue. Chuck Indians, Arizona, they have my immigrate, migrate away. Many civilization has died out because of drought of generations. Okay. So that was my understanding. So I made it into the drama, theatrical drama. Remember, I worked in theater, Toronto Down Theater, Martha Graham School, and I worked first job in Toronto, Canada was, I work, worked as assistant director, state director of uh, opera, Canadian Opera Company. That, that came from Japan to perform in uh, O'Keefe Center, Madame Butterfly was a program, Madame Papa Butterfly. So I happened to be able to read music and uh, yes, I should play classical guitar like crazy. And also I can, I understand Italian very well, rhythm in the So I applied Mr. Ginger Torrell. I studied set design in Italy. I know I visited Madame Butterfly's old house in Japan too. So do you want to use me? So he said, yeah. And I had to interview, hey, how you as assistant? <laughs> I was totally unqualified, but uh, I knew. I could read music and I could understand what they're saying. And many, you know, by the way, those opera singers, many don't understand what they're saying. They don't understand Italian, just like parroting. And the tenor saying this and that, uh, Mr. Torero, that is wrong. It's the point that he's saying, floor to ceiling is all paper or something. He was saying, floor and ceiling. Oh, oh, oh. that's kind of thing. So it's a, it's a joke, but uh, I helped him. That's why, at least that's why. Anyway, that kind of thing. So I was in the theater. So I wanted to make this little inspirational idea, intuitional inspiration into a drama of rain festival. It's nothing very clever about it. It's just a very natural story and energy of people craving rain and abstract sense of God, which is often happened to be the sun. Many people are saying Middle East, Japan. God is sun, Shintoism is sun God. No book they write about religion. You know that? Japanese Shintoism has no book. Mm. Amazing, isn't it? Western religion is everything written, everything in it. Answer is there. Japan don't say the answer is nature, trees and water. Yeah. That's simple. I like it. So, you know, so I wanted to make a film like that in Peru brown-skinned people running around, and that's kite, I love kite, yeah. Kite is showing my trick trick uh, of magic, so I shouldn't talk too much, but whoever sees a movie, uh, my film, little film, understand what I was talking about. This is very, very ancient technology, high-tech. People knew that as much as bow and arrow, that is element of my film. You know what I'm saying? So, and no, it's, yeah, it's and, and the film is really beautiful, and you, like you say, it's very simplistic, and it is, but it's, it's, it's gorgeous in its simplicity. Like you just don't see a lot of work like this anymore, which is why we were so taken by it. Um, 
how long did it take you to, you know, once you actually started working on it more regularly to complete oh, I see. that? I see, I see. Well, I was in Hanna Barbera and I came back to uh, Vancouver and picked up my box of uh, drawing already had and continued to work uh, in Hollywood. So every Friday night I stayed in my office room, Mr. Hanna gave me my room and the couch so I could sleep in the morning. All night I worked every weekend and animating. So that's the work I did in Hollywood. Non-commercial work in the mm -hmm. center of commercial art. <laughs> wow, wow. Did this story change a lot from when you first started thinking about it to the final? Oh, part? that's a good question. Didn't change. Only change I made was very end, I added rainbow to come after the rain. Mm. Because you know why? Because I shown very only few people I shown the rough cuts, you know. One gentleman, he goes to the local church and he said, uh, oh, you know him, right? Rick? You want to sit down? Yeah. Sit down. My wife, oh, like, she yes. helped, me, helped the little painting of a song on this kind of thing, you know, but, and she suffered my uh and uh and it was a that group one. effort a group effort yeah uh, yeah yeah Lorraine. and the she was in Hanna many many years she was a background artist she's very good in the color design many stylizations not only color stylizing new productions we work the same production show too anyway say hello oh hi how are you hello <laughs> all right so uh yeah, I start work and I finished that all paperwork animation. Okay, so I came back with that box in a, in a truck, and then uh, I asked to uh, uh, hear my old uh, friend Marvin Nuland, and you never heard his name. I, oh, that's why. Uh, he, I asked him, is there any way I could use National Film Board's? Oxbury camera, which is about 10, eight feet, 10 feet tall, vertical camera. I know very well, but I never used it. Only thing I used was, was uh, uh, the camera stand I built myself by wood in the private to make my film, experiment film from the early stage with such 16 mil Volax zoom lens camera. Some people know that, old generation, older than 80, 80 years old, people know that. Now, so this camera, I got okay at NFB, Vancouver, and I start shoot frame by frame. Yeah. So I shot that. There were problem, technical problem, but I finished shooting. That's what you have seen it. And the music was a beautiful music someone did. He He's from, Uruguay, uh, like a long haired, you know, sadhu like, out of this earth kind of character, beautiful guy. And he plays Japanese bamboo flute called shakuhachi, beautifully. And other original instrument, uh, ethnic flute. And so anyway, he did work so hard that in Europe, he made music. Yeah, yeah. So did you like that music? The music is beautiful. I was going to ask if yeah. that was make, made specifically for the film or if you that was a yeah, man, music. He did everything following the concept. He understood concept, spiritual concept, religion, the spirits, and people, energy. So he was a perfect guy. Oh, it's beautiful. The film is really, really wonderful. And I'm I'm sad that it took so long to make, but I'm curious, would you make another one? Well, oh, yeah. I, I think time is up. Oh. Yeah, never, in, never say never. No, no. Maybe my mind will keep going on the other side of the mirror. I'm <laughs> going past through the mirror very soon, like Aris. Well, you're leaving behind an amazing body of work and a really wonderful it, film. It's a storyboard. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I did this, uh, as you can see, 1987. Oh, wow. And it really uh, was a long working process. Yeah. But I was in the market day and night, every day. 
I had to make bread and enjoy life. Going around the world on backpack, nine months, that's a break. And then all kinds of things, Europe, one year. So I went to working every night like a maniac worker. Some people do, maniac. Almost, you have to be a type of maniac to do anything animation work. If he's a normal person, you never make it. Obsessed, well, maniacal, you know, artist. That's uh, Lorraine, study. Lorraine, I'm curious, did you ever think that this was actually gonna get finished? After so many years? I had to, because I invested too much. And I wanted to do, do something, little thing good. I've done other things good, but something of my own without asking anybody's help, depending on someone else, except music. So in my life, so many things I failed because I had to depend on someone else's skill, like computer graphics. I was hired as an art director, company called Vertigo in Vancouver, new company in Canada as an art director or creative service. But people are like a zombie in front of a computer and they couldn't communicate with me. So company hired me as a kind of human touch. How zoom lenses pan is, is crosses up. They don't know anything like a zombie figuring out how to make a box sell eggs. But crazy, no? Yeah. <laughs> well, you should. Sure I talk too much. No, not at all. You've certainly accomplished something beautiful with the film. So <laughs> congratulations. Your right. life's work is well rendered and it is really beautiful. And I cannot wait to share it with everyone on the big screen. Thank you both so much for your time. It's been very, very lovely. And I I hope to, you know, be able to speak with you again in the future. Thank you both. Oh, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.